Hello all, welcome back to the predictive analytics regression and classification course. This is lecture 15 part A. So in this uh, lecture, in this discussion, we will start nonlinear regression. So suppose, let me start with an example, okay, let me start with an example that suppose the there is only one y variable and one x variable and the true relationship between y and x is sort of f is unknown okay f is unknown and um, suppose true relationship is this function which is generating the data, this model which is generating the data where epsilon follows some normal white noise or normal zero tau and y equal to sin x by x is the actual true model but we don't know that this is the model. So what we are going to do, we are going to simulate some data from the above model and pretend that we don't know the true function as if and obviously our target is to learn or estimate this function okay learn or estimate the unknown function f that is our target now if we simulate from this function and what we will have we will ha and we pretend as if we don't know what is the true relationship between x and y then what we have is only the data, the x and the y. That's all. And if we plot them, this is the kind of data that you are seeing. Now, what happens is typically this kind of data we can see sometimes in physics or in some, you know, biology also that you have most of your data which is hovering around zero and then there is a point somewhere suddenly there is a signal so maybe it's just going like this and then suddenly there is a signal and signal burst and came down as you deviate from the signal point and then again it's hovering around zero so this kind of things actually happens now question is how do you estimate this function okay it's clearly there is no trend there is some you know seasonality looks like but it's difficult just seeing the data but can we estimate the function here so let us try to formalize the mathematical construction of this through something called basis function okay something called basis function okay so let me just take a blue color okay so this is the basis function expansion so we will we'll talk about it let's talk about it so suppose the ith record is yi is some function of xi plus f and i. Now f of x we can write it as some linear combinations of beta j f phi j x where phi is known as the basis system for f of x. We can write it as phi times beta. So phi here we can write it as phi 1 x phi 2 x dot 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 phi k x okay and beta is beta 1 beta 2 dot 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 beta k okay and then we just you know if you just take the dot product, what we get is essentially um, f of x. So this is typically how we assume that, okay, you just approximate with the phi of, you don't know the f, you approximate with phi times beta. Now, can we have some examples? Yes, obviously. This example we have seen before y equal to beta 1 plus beta 2 xi plus beta 3 xi squared dot 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 f shell and i. So this is like polynomial functions bunch of this is typically called polynomial functions f of x is my this uh, basis expansion kind of thing okay. 
polynomial basis. Then there could be Fourier basis that we have tried this model also previously. Remember the Chennai temperature data, right? Where we fit sin omega s, cos omega s, sin o 2 omega s, cos 2 omega x. You have to choose the omega properly. We chose omega 2 pi to pi p. p was our the you know frequent the size of the season and we can write it as phi as our basis and beta as our coefficient so we can effectively remember that we wrote our Chennai temperature data model as y equal to phi beta plus epsilon so example here is consider consider Chennai temperature temperature data modeling exercise exercise in previous previous lectures okay What are the other basis functions that we can consider? We can consider something called exponential basis. We can consider Gaussian basis. We can uh, basis correspond to spline regression. These are the basis which corresponds to spline regression. So there are different kind of basis are there which you can use for uh, modeling your data. Now. How we estimate? So remember that my phi is completely known. The basis is completely the basis function, the basis expand basis, the set of basis function is completely, completely known. Okay. What is unknown is the beta. Beta are unknown. The coefficients are unknown. So essentially. My basis expansions you can think of as a feature engineering. These are engineered features, but we are doing it in such a way, essentially that we have already discussed, and then we are putting it into the, uh, you know, we are trying to estimate the beta here. Okay. So far, so good. Now, I'm going to expand it to an extent and uh, to the you know so far we whatever we were doing remember that uh, we were expanding it to the k many functions we were always expanding it to the k many functions if you look into here also we are saying dot 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 but we are always saying it is k many basis function so in how many uh, basis how many features they will have that we are putting it as sort of a uh, finite parameter so k turns out to be a parameter some sort of parameter so k is a number of features is number of uh, basis or features uh, chosen by chosen by user or data scientist data scientist so sometimes these choices are a bit ad hoc so we you don't want to choose this as an ad hoc you want somewhere to you know data to decide which k to choose so what mathematicians have done that can we go beyond k can we k push to infinity and it lets data decide where to capital k here goes to infinity and can we come up with a function can we estimate this function so this is a very interesting idea so what they're saying that y is a function of x plus epsilon if Sheldon follow normal 0 sigma square i, this will lead to y as a normal of f of x comma sigma square a, but f of x is phi of beta where this guy is goes up to infinity. This summation goes up to infinity and it converges to phi of beta. 
So that means at, a, at, at every point it converges. Every point of x, it, it this this summation this this summation does not diverge to infinity. It definitely converges to phi of beta or the f of x. So that is the idea. So and in that phi k x is completely known. What is unknown is beta. Beta is unknown, and we want to estimate the beta. Now, assuming that betas are uncorrelated, random variable, and phi k x are unknown deterministic real valued function. If you make these assumptions, okay, then there is a theorem by Kosambi Karhunen Loew theorem. We can say that f of x is a stochastic process. What does it mean? f of x is a stochastic process the word stochastic is a german for probabilistic okay so that means essentially for each value of x you will get a probability distribution proper probability distribution that is typically called uh, properly defined distribution you will get as a value of x and that is called probabilistic process or in German stochastic process. Now, what f of x is a stochastic process and if we assume these betas follow normal 0 sigma square i, then turns out f of x phi beta follow Gaussian process. Okay. So, and this typically called Gaussian process prior. So this comes under the Bayesian method. I'm not going into the detail of how these things happen and all, but I'm just telling you uh, these are called Gaussian process prior. Uh, if you uh, want to know more about it, uh, you can see it in Rasmussen's book. Rasmussen's book. Okay. Uh, since f of x is a known function, therefore induced process uh, of f of x is f of x is known Gaussian process prior. So if you press, if you induce p of beta, a prior on the beta, that will induce a prior on the f, and that also a Gaussian process. So that's how you induce a function, a prior distribution on the unknown function. And turns out that there are a lot of mathematics goes into, I'm not going to the detailed derivation of those things, that f of x turns out to be a multivariate normal with phi x of beta naught as mean and some covariance function, k x x transpose. And y of x, this is the most crucial part, that y of x turns out to be a multivariate normal of n dimensional n is the sample size small n is the sample size sample size so small n is the sample size and phi of x small n is uh, so it is y x is going to be uh, coming from a multivariate normal with of dimension of sample size with mean as phi x of beta naught and k convergence is k x x transpose surplus sigma square i. So this is an interesting thing. So then what happens that how do you, so th this is my likelihood function. Okay. So this is my likelihood function. Let me write it down. Sort of likelihood model. So this is actually our likelihood model. Likelihood model okay and then the estimated value of y given a x star a new point x star this is the expected value of function sampled from the posterior at the value of x star don't worry about the posterior prior and all these things if you are not familiar with the bayesian methods but what it tells us that you can estimate the function f hat if at new point test point x star as a function of mu x plus kx star kx and kxx sigma square i inverse y minus mu x. Now, this is a matrix of order n. 
Now if you, so that means in the solution, this is the final solution. That is the final solution and as you run the, uh, run, run this solution, what happens that the time complexity of the matrix inversion is order of n cubed. So that means if your sample size increases, the implementation of this solution is extremely difficult. So this is almost impossible to implement. So if for a very large data set, okay. So, so this is our data model and this is some hyperparameters that typically we set and this is the likelihood, here is a multivariate Gaussian distributions and this is negative log likelihood and as you know if you have a negative log likelihood you can pass it through a uh, Similarly, you can write the negative log posterior distribution, don't worry about it and you can run the negative log likelihood through an optimization routine to estimate the maximum likelihood estimates. So however, often divergence of optimization routine for MLE is being reported because Barger et al in Chasa showed that the, you know, the GP prior model, if you don't put some prior on or penalty on the parameter space then it will have this problem so that can be you avoided so there are some prior on the like you know uh, is being like inverse gamma on the sigma alpha rho and sigma some robust choice of prior is being also being given we will do you will it, it will understand when we will do it in hands on and so here is the experiment that we were doing at the beginning okay so y is a sin x by x and then where normal 0 tau square from this model we are going to simulate the data from the above model and pretend that we do not know the true function we will we will simulate from this model and we will pretend we do not know this model we do not know we do not know the true true function okay we do not know the true function our objective is to estimate or learn the function from just y and x and what we found that this is the data this was the data that was simulated and the estimated function using gp regression was this that is going through and we trust us me the this we have I have not given any information but it just learn on itself that and almost you know picked up the true function as it should be so in the next video what I am going to do we are going to do the hands-on and in the hands-on we will we will implement this uh, thing and we will see that how nicely it can fit uh, uh, unknown completely unknown function as long as the function is somewhat smooth and there is no major break or anything it will work pretty good so i hope you enjoyed this video so please uh, watch the next video which will be hands-on of implementation of gaussian process regression in with r thank you very much see you in the next video